Friends, grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus, the newborn sovereign, King of Kings, Emmanuel, God with us. We come to worship. Christ is born. Alleluia. Jesus is among us. Alleluia. Shout with joy, give thanks and sing. Christ is born. Come, let us adore him.
Friends, let us confess our sins to God this morning as we reflect on Christ who was born into our world as a helpless baby sent to bring us light. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, we confess that even when you brought your Son down from heaven to be our light, we hesitated. We were the very darkness we wished to eradicate. We confess that often we are the last ones to want and facilitate the change that your baby son brings. Help us to remember that the season of Christmas is not just about beautiful bows and twinkly lights, but about helping those who need you most wherever we go. Help us to go beyond the warm comfort of the hearth this Christmas season. As Mary was humble and obedient to your word, may we be also. Jesus is changing our hearts this very moment. Help us listen. Let us pray together silently. Amen. Hear this, the good news. Jesus has come this day as a baby in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. He has come to bring us meekness, kindness, and deliverance. Not as an all-powerful king, but as a vulnerable child. Yet this child is the very one who has brought us salvation and forgives us all our sins. Alleluia. Thanks be to God for God's great love. Amen. Hello, boys and girls. I'd like to read to you the Christmas story as illustrated by Dick Bruno. It happened on a dark night a long time ago. There were shepherds in the field keeping watch over their sheep. And they were quietly talking among themselves when suddenly they saw a light in the sky. And the light was so beautiful and so bright that it seemed as if it were daytime, but it wasn't daytime. That light came from an angel, an angel who came to bring a message from God. Don't be afraid, said the angel, for the shepherds were very surprised and full of fear. And the angel said, I've come to tell you something very good. Listen, a baby was just born in Bethlehem, named Jesus. And he will bring joy to the whole world. Go and see. He'll be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. When the angel had said this, another angel came, and then another, and another, until the sky was full of angels. And all together they sang a song, and that song sounded so beautiful that the shepherds and the sheep in the field listened very quietly. Glory be to God, the angels sang. Glory be to God in the highest and peace on earth. When the song was over, the angels all disappeared into the sky. Oh, how beautiful that was, said the shepherds to one another. Let's go to Bethlehem soon so we can see the thing that the angel has told us about. And so they set out. And after walking for a while, they came to a stable. And it was a white stable with green wooden doors and a window that couldn't be closed because there was no shutter. It was a stable in which the animals slept when it was too cold outside. Would it be a place like this? The shepherds asked one another. Could Jesus have been born in a stable? 
The angel had said that they would find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And a manger is a trough from which the animals eat. Well, let's go inside, said the shepherds. And there they found a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, just as the angel had said. And next to the manger stood Mary and Joseph. Softly, the shepherds approached. Oh, how glad they were to have found Jesus. And to Mary and Joseph, they told the message which the angel had brought to them. You know who else went to the stable in Bethlehem? Three wise men, one with a white beard, one with a black beard, and one without a beard, with a friendly face. And they wore beautiful coats, red, green, and yellow, and crowns of gold on their heads. And they rode camels. When they got to the stable, they climbed off their camels and all three brought out of their packs beautiful gifts. The wise man with the white beard had a container filled with incense. The wise man with the black beard had a chest full of gold. And the wise man with the friendly face had a jar of myrrh. When the wise men came into the stable, Mary took the baby out of the manger so they could see him. And they gave him the containers of frankincense and myrrh and also the gold. How glad the kings were that they had found Jesus, who had come to bring joy and God's love to all people. And when Mary asked how they knew that Jesus would be born in the stable, the wise man with the black beard told this story. Just listen. One evening, the wise men, who lived in a distant land, saw a star so glorious that they bumped into each other. And they said that this new star in the sky must mean that a very special child had been born. Let's go find him and take him gifts, they said. And they climbed on their camels, and the star showed them the way. When their story was over, the white-bearded king said, let's go now. We have a long journey to make. They left quietly, and Mary and Joseph continued to wave until they could no longer see them. The shepherds also left, and they told everyone they met that Jesus was born. And all those people told other people until everyone knew. All the people were happy, and they agreed with each other that every birthday of Jesus would be a joyful day. And that's the story of Christmas. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your gift to us of your son, Jesus. Help us to celebrate with joy and with love. Amen.
Merry Christmas. Our Old Testament reading comes to us this morning from the prophet Isaiah in the ninth chapter, beginning at the second verse. The prophet celebrates the coming rise of a new king in the line of David who will rule over Israel with justice and righteousness. Listen now to what God is saying. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied exaltation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel lesson comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Listen now for the word of the Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger, and suddenly There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. One of my earliest memories is of Charlie Brown's Christmas special. I looked forward to it every year. I always wanted to have an aluminum Christmas tree. That just seemed really cool. The story of the Charlie Brown Christmas special is the search for the real meaning of Christmas. Charlie Brown wants to know what Christmas is all about. As part of his search for the real meaning of Christmas, he is tasked with finding a Christmas tree for the school play. 
After bringing back the most pathetic looking tree and being ridiculed, Charlie Brown burst out, Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Linus steps onto the dark stage and he says, Lights, please. Isn't that part of what Christmas is all about? Lights, please. During this season, we light candles. We decorate our homes and our sanctuaries with twinkling lights that pierce through the darkness. We offer the longest night services to shed a little light into the time of darkness of our souls. Christmas Eve wouldn't be complete or correct without lighting candles and singing Silent Night. Christmas season is about lights, please. This time of year, we are reminded how dark things can become. We've reached the halfway point between, with the coming of the winter solstice. We are at our longest nights of the season. Over the next days and weeks, things will continue to get slowly lighter. But until those days come, in that time of the darkest night, we look for the light in the darkness. Lights, please. When I started with the Presbyterian Newton almost 10 years ago, we were in the midst of winter and I had to commute from Philadelphia for about six months. And part of the week, um, when I was in New Jersey, I lived at Johnsonburg camp. And the first night I was to stay at camp, I had an evening meeting. So I had to leave the office after dark and find my way to Jayburg, a place I had only seen once and during the daylight. And I got lost very lost. I had to call Sonia for directions and try to explain to her where I was in order to get to where I needed to be. Eventually I made it to Johnsonburg and when I drove into camp it was dark. Very dark. How was I going to find my lodge? I drove in, drove past the office, and I turned left around the trees and there was a light, a light in the darkness. The camp director had turned on the lights of my lodge so I could find my way to safety and comfort. The scriptures for today from Isaiah and Luke both have light as a theme. The people of our Old Testament scripture were in a long season of darkness and the light herald the good news of safety and comfort, love and hope and the peace of God that they had long waited for. In Luke, Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem searching for a light that would signal there was a safe place to stop for the birth of the baby. The shepherds in their fields at night were overwhelmed with the glory of the angels and they curiously searched for the light in the darkness that the angels spoke of. The Magi, seeking knowledge and illumination, followed the light in the sky. Lights, please. In the Christmas season, in this time emerging from the pandemic, we find ourselves saying, lights, please. We have been in the darkness for so long. Moving through this season and into the new year, we are seeking the light that provides comfort, the light that brings peace and love and hope. And here we are halfway through the dark of the winter season and the light is there. On this Christmas day, we are reminded that the light is here, not absent from us. The baby Jesus is the light that's so long awaited, that was so long awaited. 
As his story progresses through the Gospels, this baby grows into the one who continues to shine light on the darkness, illuminating God's love for God's people, those who are close and those who are far. He is also the light of God that goes dark from death, only to be the light again through the resurrection. Christmas is truly the day of the beginning of that light. The days are getting longer now. There will be more light because we're halfway out of the dark. Now, some do not feel like they're halfway through the dark, but totally surrounded by the darkness of grief, the loss, the darkness of loss, illness, addiction, the darkness of anxiety, fear, uncertainty, and so much more. Lights, please. Doctor Who, the 11th Doctor Christmas special, takes Kazran Sardik through the journey of the Christmases past, present, and future in order to shine light into the darkness of Kazran's heart. In the end, Abigail, uh, the heroine of the story, but she was frozen because she was a collateral for family debt, she shines the light that he finally finds by singing to the shark in the chaos of the cloud layer, which releases the hold of the cloud weather and the spaceship is able to safely land and 4,003 lives are saved. And the doctor smiles, leaning against the TARDIS saying, halfway out of the dark. I know that's a lot to digest. Basically, it's another Christmas story of kindness and love shining in the darkness. Lights, please. We can be the light that is so needed in our world today. So many are crying out, lights, please. Each of us can, can be the light for another. As you gather around your holiday tables, take a moment to share a story about someone who shined a light into your darkness. As congregations, our lights together can shine into the dark places of lives and communities. We have the ability to shine, to illuminate, to break the darkness apart for others, even if just for a moment. Sometimes those moments are all that is needed. On Christmas Day, remember, we are halfway out of the dark. We can shine the light of the love of God through Jesus Christ. Lights, please. Let us now open our hearts and minds in prayer to God. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ. You entered the world in the stillness of the night, quietly, as an innocent baby, and come to us even now, in those moments when we allow our hearts and minds to fall still. You are the light of the world, Shine into all of our darkest places. Where violence, greed, or pride dwells, send your radiance to break through. Where illness, depression, or addiction reigns, establish your brilliance to chase away all shadow. Where divorce, estrangement, or discord pierces hearts, lend the warm glow of your love to heal and comfort. You are the hope of the prophets. Bring justice to all people. Transform our deadly dance of oppressor and oppressed, of powerful and powerless, of the haves and the have-nots. Speak again your word of deliverance, 
to those who only know suffering and hardship, and to those who find themselves hated, ignored, or passed over because of who they are. You are the Word made flesh. Help us to proclaim your good news. Nourish us, your church, with your living word, that we might be strengthened for our calling to bring your hope and promise to every hurting person near and far. You are named Wonderful Counselor and Mighty God. All authority rests on your shoulders. Guide those with earthly authority into paths of righteousness and plant in them the knowledge that they are ultimately answerable, not to their constituents, but to you. Grant us, too, the grace to grow in your wisdom, love, and mercy, so we may show forth the reign of God in all we do. You are the long-awaited Messiah. Deliver us from sin and death. Number us among your children, and look with mercy upon our shortcomings. We lift before you those on our hearts and minds this day who are in need of your grace, healing, and comfort. All this we pray in your holy name as we join in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
as you consider the light that Christmas shines into our lives and the light that you can shine into the lives of others, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.